morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Alex Paul from Investor Stream, and I'll be your host today. Presenting for you today is QX Resources Managing Director Steve Promnitz, following the company's strategic investment with Batteries Minerals focused Bayrock Resources Limited, an unlisted Australian public company with a portfolio of highly prospective battery minerals assets in Sweden, primarily in nickel, cobalt, and copper. Now, Steve's currently coming to us from Korea, so we might have to cut this a little bit short. I understand he's got a fair bit on. So following the presentation, Steve will be available to address some questions that you may have. Um, we've had a couple sent through already, so appreciate that uh, from you guys on the floor there. So you can also download the presentation by navigating to the handouts pane in the control panel, and I understand it's also been lodged on the ASX, so you can navigate to the platform as well. But finally, I'd like to throw it over to Steve to kick things off for us. Steve, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and thank you all uh, if you're listening to this live or by uh, by replay. Uh, I'm Steve Prominence. If you haven't met me before, I've been working in the lithium space now for about eight years in resources for more than 30 in either technical management or financial roles. We're going to be talking today about this latest transaction that uh, QX Resources has announced, which, uh, as Alex mentioned, is in the nickel space uh, with an unlisted company, Bayrock. And we're also going to talk about our key lithium focus, where we're going with lithium, and also some of the other uh, projects that we have. It, we're very much focused on battery minerals and critical minerals, and this is all part of the energy transition, which continues to move apace around the world. Next slide, please. Uh, naturally, like all presentations, there is a disclaimer. Please read this at your leisure. So the key focus in QX Resources now for some time has been on lithium. We're focusing on hard rock projects, and that is in the prime location for hard rock projects, which is in the Pilbara of Western Australia. Now, why is that proven area for deposits and also a rapid timeline for, for moving these projects forward? But separately, like this trip here, I'm regularly talking to end users. And so end users want to hear about the full gamut of, of uh, materials that they need for uh, constructing batteries, and that includes nickel. And that's the key reason why we're working with Bayrock on nickel sulfides. And then separately, we have uh, molybdenum, copper, and gold projects in Queensland. We've had uh, drill programs underway. We're waiting for results. We've got a number of other drill targets that are ready. And as uh, people know from following me in the past, this is um, a team that's experienced in value creation, both uh, myself and I'm very fortunate to work with the board members who can do that as well. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, Hard Rock Projects in the Pilbara. I want to reiterate that the benefit of Western Australia is it's one of the few places in the world where you can go to, from discovery into production in less than three years. Now, of course, there's capital constraints, the ability to source material personnel, but from a permitting perspective and the simplicity of producing a, a concentrate from hard rock in comparison to many other commodities and many other locations, it really is a premier location. Likewise, for nickel, uh, Australia is a, is a key place to, uh, to look for nickel and source it, as is Canada, uh, as is Brazil. Uh, Indonesia for a particular type of deposit, but for class one nickel sulfides, um, Sweden has a very similar um, uh, geology to Canada and parts of Russia. And now that Russia is pretty much off limits, it is a, a key place to, uh, to look for nickel and it's inside the, the EU area of influence. They're trying to develop a battery material supply chain. So is the United States and um, uh, East Asia has been doing that for many years. We continue to have a focus on scale and relevance. And the reason I'm here is that I can really bring to play this focus on end user participation in this earlier phase in the exploration to accelerate development. Next slide, please. So 
you've probably heard uh, that lithium prices are off, but I can tell you that demand exceeds production. There are always those in the market that want to take the other side of the, uh, of the trade. Uh, there is increasing production, thank goodness, because we need it, but the projected demand uh, significantly exceeds production. So it's still a great place to be in. And the problem for a number of cathode and battery makers is where are they going to source their materials from? Uh, once a project gets to the resource stage or pre-feasibility stage, uh, off-takes are pretty much already signed up with the major players. So everybody else is in this industry, where do they go? And uh, one of the solutions that I've been suggesting here and elsewhere is to participate with proven explorers at an earlier stage and actually work on strategic partnerships to deliver those outcomes. Uh, we have one of those investors already on our, on our um, uh, shareholding list and I'm working with others so that we can deliver a number of projects in a short period of time. Next slide, please. So let's turn now to what we announced just a few days ago with Bayrock. We have a framework agreement to essentially help an unlisted company, Bayrock, go to the market. They've got a good range of projects in the right location in Sweden. Uh, some of these are past mining areas, so essentially they're brownfields uh, expansions. And then there's also some green fields with uh, nickel projects at surface. It really is a unique opportunity where you can have the sorts of materials that the end users want actually inside the European Union. Now, nickel isn't like lithium. It has to go through a number of processes. But fortunately, right there in Scandinavia, there's smelters, there's refineries, so you can actually produce the material the cathode makers need to make their precursor products. And uh, that's one of the benefits. Further, location is one thing, but you've also got to have grade. Uh, if you're looking for nickel, if you can get high grade projects uh, around 2%, and that's what Bayrock has, that's a great start. I used to work for a company called Western Mining, now part of BHP in the 1990s, I spent quite a bit of time exploring and looking at projects around the world. And I think this is well positioned. Um, they've got good people on the ground in Sweden, and uh, I think it's a great opportunity. And so we just want to assist them to move forward. Next slide, please. There. So if we look uh, where it's located, as I mentioned, you've got a nickel smelter, a nickel refinery, not far from their projects. But I do want to focus here on this past mining district. Uh, grades over 2% nickel, but 0.7% copper and half a gram gold. Uh, even without the nickel, these are the sorts of projects that people would be going for anyway. So we just need to expand uh, the, the footprint and the size of these resources. And so I think it's, um, it's a good opportunity. And for me, it gives me an opportunity to talk to end users about nickel as well as lithium. Next slide, please. This is a cross section of the main project, Langer. You can see uh, on the top left of the cross section, that's the historic workings, and this extends down dip. If we went to Western Australia, it would be a very similar uh, location. And uh, so it's got some real potential. Then below, you see these grades of 2%. These are within 30 metres of surface. And uh, so it's a good project. And uh, our aim with Bay Rock is to assist in advancing at least these two projects out of their six so that we can add value uh, both for them and also for us. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. So let's stepping back to the core assets of QXR. You know that we're focused on, uh, on the Pilbara. It is a great location. Turner River is only 15 kilometers from the operating Wajana mine, 50 kilometers from Pilgungura. And those things, those projects and deposits basically stick straight out of the ground. Um, it's our view that there's gonna be at least another five or six of these in this general area. That's why we're moving forward to drill as soon as we can in in Split Rock and also assess Yule River and Western Shore. Um, and we aim to be drilling some more pegmatites at uh, Turner River once we have those permits that come in. 
I do apologize, we don't have the results yet. Um, it has been frustrating. Next slide, please. What's interesting about Turner River is there's actually two styles of mineralization here. One is with lithium micas, which is um, very favorably looked upon in China in particular, and a couple of others. And then separately, we've got outcropping pegmatites and outcropping pegmatites in uh, some of our other projects that we aim to be drilling. Uh, results at surface have been good. We expect to release a result soon. I do apologize, expected those in February. This has been uh, an issue around the industry. Next slide, please. Then separately in Queensland, you would have heard in the past about some of the gold projects we have there. Um, what has been a bit of a sleeper is that we've got a very nice looking molybdenum project, Gord Anthony, with uh, over 100 million pounds of uh, molybdenum at surface. The molly price has gone up significantly. We also have similar looking targets with copper and gold in them uh, along a certain structure, a long strike from the Anthony project. And so we're gonna be doing some further work to advance these as critical minerals. Next slide, please. And so we've got a portfolio of battery minerals. We aim to get uh, results out on our lithium drilling and do further drilling this year. Um, and the great part about uh, WA is that drilling isn't too expensive. We aim to have those results in the second quarter, third quarter on hard rock. Um, aspirationally, I would like to see resource at least on one of these by the end of the year. And then advance these nickel sulfides with bay rock also indicatively by the third quarter of this year. Um, we're also working on some other uh, potential opportunities. Um, but as I, as I said at the start, anything here that looks reasonable that we could move to resource indicatively, as soon as that comes out, we could be in production in less than three years. And that's the reason I'm here, is actually securing that sort of long-term strategic support to go and find a number of these projects for the end users. Next slide, please. So like all lithium producers and lithium explorers, uh, their share price has been off recently. The market has been off, but we're still in a solid position and uh, we still have cash in the bank, able to continue this, um, this uh, exploration process. And uh, look, watch this space. I know things have been quiet and we've been quiet frustratingly so due to lack of news but uh, you can expect a lot more coming soon. Uh, and with that, I think we come to our last slide. Oh, sorry. Um, it would be remiss of me to talk about one of the key reasons I'm with QXR. Here you've got different board members with different skills that are good at what they do. Uh, the executive chairman, Morris, is a proven decades of ability to raise funds, work as a stockbroker, um, look at different ways of structuring uh, companies. Uh, Roger, an experienced geologist on a number of boards. Dan, one of the best company secretaries I've come across. And uh, Ben, who has worked in IR now uh, for many years. Um, the great benefit here is that everybody can put a certain amount of work to making QXR uh, successful. And that's one of the key reasons I'm here. So now we're gonna turn over to questions. These are our contact details, and uh, and happy to pass it back to you, Alex. Thanks, Steve. Now, I understand you've got a, a meeting to shoot off to very shortly, so we'll try to keep these short and sharp. Now, as you mentioned, you've been working in the lithium space for eight years. As you mentioned, it, it appears stock prices are coming off, um, and the sentiment appears to have shifted. What's your view on the state of the current market? Yeah, so... Um, uh, for those who haven't been uh, following pricing, uh, spot pricing for lithium has come off from $70,000, $80,000 a tonne uh, for, for high purity uh, carbonate or hydroxide. And that's pulled back to around $50,000 a tonne. Honestly, it wasn't that long ago when it was trading between five dollars and $10,000 a tonne. And at 30,000, you can make an absolute mozza. Um, so don't be too worried about the pricing itself. Look more at the demand. The demand for EVs continues to accelerate and therefore the demand for batteries. Uh, the energy storage solutions need batteries together with electric vehicles. And so 
all of these solutions need lithium. Thank goodness we're seeing increased production out of Latin America and out of China, but we're still way short. And I know that because the meetings I've been having here and also those on Zoom before this trip, uh, there is almost a desperation to secure this. So I think it's just a um, uh, some markets playing games, trying to reposition it. $80,000 was probably a little high to keep this industry sustainable. So uh, I think with pricing off, it's actually a good time to, uh, to reconsider this in your portfolios. Not that I can uh, am allowed to provide financial advice. Now, Steve, you mentioned the molybdenum project in Queensland where you've got a resource. Now, the Molly price has had a big run lately. Is this a catalyst for you to look at advancing the Anthony Molly project? Um, so the short answer is yes. We're just trying to work out how best to do that. And it's been interesting talking to some of the critical mineral uh, companies that are looking for supply. What's different about Anthony is it's only molybdenum. It's, it doesn't come with copper, it doesn't come with gold, and historically uh, that has turned off developers. But in this day where people are looking for purity of, of product, it's actually quite a, a benefit of the resource. So we're now reviewing that. Uh, we'll probably look at ways to um, review the feasibility of that so that we can uh, market it more effectively. Watch that space. Thanks, Dave. Now, in the past year or two, uh, QXR started some, some drilling and trenching on the gold projects in Queensland, and I believe you've got some pretty good results. Um, what's the plan for these projects, given the strength of the gold price at the moment? Thank you for asking that. Uh, if uh, Roger Jackson was on this call, he would be even more frustrated than I am. We wanted to actually drill that late last year. There was a narrow window uh, in the weather. Um, it, as you know, it's been raining cats and dogs on the East Coast. Uh, it's looking like it's drying up at the moment. We'd just like to get a few more holes into uh, one of the northern projects called Red Dog. The trenches there are outstanding. It looks like a classic epithermal project. Um, uh, we're, uh, we're going to be doing a strategic review just to see how the heck we can actually not just drill it, but then move it on to the next stage. Now, you mentioned that uh, you... Well, I mean, we've been promising uh, drill results out of Turner River, but we're yet to see anything. You referenced it briefly in your presentation. Can you just expand on what the delay uh, is is that are going on there? It's frustrating across the space. I thought it was just us. I thought maybe we hadn't done something right. Um, uh, we're getting some initial numbers coming in now, but uh, we need to actually see where all these numbers are so we can work out the next plan. It's just taking time. I told the market that we expected it in the middle of um, February. It's now the middle of March. Um, but uh, look, it's all I can say is it's going to be soon. And uh, this isn't just us. It's an industry-wide issue, particularly when you start looking at test work or metallurgy. Thanks, Steve. I understand you have to go soon. So just a couple more. Um, are there any environmental or permitting challenges in Sweden? Sweden is part of the EU, so naturally it's not straightforward. However, uh, what we've seen in the EU is now a keenness to support projects that are associated with the energy transition, if they're rare earths, if they're nickel, lithium, what have you. So that's been a bonus. And uh, regulators are aware that they need to source these products. The second thing is in the north of Sweden, it's like a different country to the south. There you've got a long history, more than 100 years of mining. You've got skilled individuals, you've got uh, skilled drillers. So there's actually a groundswell of people that are quite keen to see um, the, the work occurring. So look, it's not straightforward, but very few places in the world are uh, straightforward. However, there is a permitting process to go through and I must say the, uh, the new federal government in Sweden is quite supportive, and that's backed up by the increase in infrastructure that we're seeing in the region. So I think with the right sort of project, and particularly a project like the Langer, that is a closed mine, and so you've actually got some of the infrastructure and uh, past permitting there. There's already a, uh, a way to develop things. 
Uh, look, it's not easy, but uh, the thing is, it doesn't matter where you go. Chile used to be straightforward and now it's more complicated. So I think um, the work that we've done so far, I think there's definitely a pathway there to see uh, projects move forward. Fantastic, Steve. Look, that's all the time we have today. Um, again, as I mentioned, Steve's got to run to a meeting. So um, thank you all for joining me. I'd also like to thank Steve for presenting and taking the time to answer some questions. Steve, before I let you go, uh, do you have any final comments to leave with us today? I do. Um, first of all, thank you all for joining. QXR is an explorer, so I can't guarantee success on every project, but we're focused on delivering Hard rock lithium, because it's a large demand. We're looking at other lithium projects. The reason we're supporting nickel as well as lithium is because I have this skill, well, not a skill, uh, experience in talking to end users about working strategically on projects. We have support at the moment, and I anticipate greater support coming forward. And so when a stock price is softer or the market is softer, it's those long-term strategic relationships that ensure that you're never short of money, that you can ensure that projects get delivered on a reasonable timeline. And that's what all of the board members here at QX are actually uh, aimed on delivering. So uh, keep this one uh, in, in view. I think uh, we'll surprise on the upside. And I do apologize about the delays the last couple of months getting results. So cheers for now. Fantastic. That wraps it up for us here. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.